Hello and welcome to Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes. I'm your host Sugar Dove, and traditionally we'd be talking to the best of the bronies, but today you're stuck with us. Sorry, <laughs> internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <not> sorry. <laughs> oh, that is cruel. <laughs> and this is why I'm the producer. Yay! <laughs> I know, goodness sake, that's not how you sell us here. We're talking to the best of the bronies, but we don't have the best of the bronies, so here are these three twerps. I think we are the cream of the crop, thank you, good sir. (laughs) Of course you do, Royal Scribbler. Indeed! Where's my cape and scepter? I was promised almost like a year ago. I'm still waiting. (laughs) I will draw that for you, right? Okay, I will add it to the artwork. (laughs) This appeases the Royal Scribbler. (laughs) So everyone who is watching the show today, this is a little out of the ordinary. Today we have you get to listen to all three of us. So I'm Sugar Dove. I'm Lurker Cat, where I just sneak on everywhere. And I'm the guy who needs no introduction because you've watched my first episodes of me now and heard my annoying voice enough times. I'm Midnight Scribe. Can't be that annoying if they keep coming back to listen. Otherwise they're clans for punishment. I'm like, mm, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> Well, today is a special occasion for us. Today is our one-year anniversary of Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes. So today we're going to give you the behind-the-scenes lowdown of what it's been like for us. And we, I think we all came up with questions for each other, didn't we? Maybe. Uh, maybe. maybe. Somewhere. I, I think I'm used to asking questions to random guests now, so I should be able to do this. Who, who wants to go first? Uh, I'll tell you what, why I don't I start? We could, do, we could like, do rock, paper, scissors, but... You'd keep, oh, right, yeah, keep, we'd, keep we do... we'd keep getting well, who I would the win. lurker would anyway, win. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I was to say, how can we do rock, paper, scissors over Skype? I would win. You just know that I would win. You don't have to see the results to know that it's I win. Because Midnight Scribe and Sugar Dev have hooves and Lurker Cat's got a paw, so she's just going to do exactly. paper every exactly. single time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I approve of this game. Alright, you go I'm... first then. Right. What inspired you both to start this podcast anyway? I'm tempted to say Norman Sanzu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Norman, the main man. <laughs> it, it was Norman, wasn't it? We got invited on his podcast before we even came up with the Night Scribes. And then we were like, hey, I wish we could do something to give back to the community. And then we're like, let's do a podcast too. Let's copy Norman. <laughs> I know. Well, exactly. It wasn't even we were invited. You were invited. And I happened to be around your house at the time. And I got, you went, Norman, I've got a friend right. Could you invite him on as well? He works for the Highland Bronies. <laughs> Just like, oh, sure, have him on. Make, make Kyle famous by introducing him to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, my nice scribe was born. And I'm yeah. always invading MBS now. Poor Norman. You lucky duck. Like, I'm never home. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the guy. You should come on again, like, Diana. It'd be fun. Yeah, sure, they, they record when I'm at work. <laughs> Darn! The joys of being on the other side of the world. It's like, gosh darn it, Dan. Maybe one day we could maybe convince Norman to record a little later or a little earlier for you. Maybe. I'll just speak about that. I mean, I've got a question that follows on quite well from that. All right. Well, what made you all stick around so long? Bacon. Fame. I'm a, I need it for the ego. It's the only way I survive. If I don't have an ego, I just, like, melt. I'm like the Wicked Witch of the West, you know, just like... It's true. <laughs> it's true. You have to keep feeding him compliments. Otherwise, he does fade away. He starts to slip a little bit. I know, it's like Tinkerbell, you know, you've got to believe in me in order for me to continue to exist. If you refuse to believe in me, I do die and end up working in a warehouse in Leaf. Yeah, it's not good. It's not pretty. But if you give him too much, he starts sassing you. Beware. It's well. a risk we have to take, I think, Tian. You have to take the sass. It is true. I mean, I, as Sugar Dove knows, uh, her and I have a bit of a sass battle. Well, I say battle. I mean, it's a bit of a massacre, really. But yes, it's, it it's, really it, but that's how our friendship works. We've known each other for long enough that we are able to operate on that plane and not have it in any way be a detriment to the friendship. You know, we've known each other for. 20 plus years you know i mean it's it really does say a lot about friendship is magic if you've known someone for 20 years and you've not murdered them <laughs> yes. Listen, look, yes. it's pretty good i mean it's like you know 20 plus years and you haven't you know hey listen it's a good advert for the show 
20 years and still ju- uh, going along. No murder. <laughs> <laughs> no other friends died in the making of this friendship. That's actually what she'll be at the end of this episode. <laughs> no actual just, friends just were murdered. Just the no actual friends, friends were hurt. It's like, because they're not actual friends. I'm joking, we are actual friends. <laughs> I think it makes it your turn, Kyle. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. I wanted to... More for yourself, Sugar Dove, but Lurker, I think you've got a say in this as well, which is... I mean, obviously, we when we started the show, we kind of did it with, like, James and Norman and a few others, and it was kind of just maybe a little bit of content for the show, but it kind of... There was a point where we kind of realized, oh, crikey, we've actually got a season and we've actually got, the show's got legs. Like, what was the point when you guys realized the show was going to be more than just a few things on YouTube and it was actually going to be something more fully fledged? When Fuck Mad it, Munchkin yeah. called Anthony C and said, hey, Anthony, do you want to be on my friend's show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when I realized that we had hope. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a little bit terrified and far too much squeeing was going on. Oh, that would have been your favourite episode, I assume. No, no it was not my no? favourite episode. Oh, it's not. It's not. But it's a funny story that when Amy came to me and said, so, hey, I know you're starting your show and I wanted to help out. Is there anyone I could invite for you? And I thought, why don't I ask the least likely person and my favourite YouTuber just for the giggles? So I went, hey, how about Anthony C? Cause, and she's <coughs> like, yeah, all right. And she vanished for about five minutes. And then she came back and went, Anthony said, yeah, here's his contact. We- what? <laughs> So the moral of the story is, if you want something done, get the munchkin on it. Get the munchkin on it. Get the munchkin. The munchkin also got us a few other guys. (laughs) Yeah, she did. She did. She's awesome. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's that that whole first season. Like, uh, I mean, obviously, the the first few people we reviewed were some people that were kind of very well, quite well acquainted with. Like, we have James Korg, we have Relicious, Norman, yourself, Lurker, and uh, a few others. But it was amazing how it kind of just... Like, I remember when we first did those very, very, very early episodes, and it was like, oh, well, you know, we're quite relaxed about this, and we're, ah, right, so we're just doing some questions, and it's going to be fun for the YouTube, and kind of, you know, that's that. And it was kind of, we didn't, I didn't think much of it initially, even though I know you were quite enthusiastic about Sugar Dove, you know, it, but it was, we never quite realized. The point, I think, for me, when I actually, when I thought it was going to have legs, and it's a bit different, it was actually when I met Time Dagger, because. I, because uh, you introduced me to him before the we recorded the episode. I think it was about two weeks beforehand, and uh, saying, "Oh, like he's a bit shy. Why don't you say hello to him? You know, test the water, see what it's like." And immediately we were riffing on each other, making puns. We're now big video game buddies, you know, despite the fact we're on different sides of the Atlantic. And it's just a. Uh, it was the point where I kind of realised, oh crikey, I can. You know, we've actually made a connection with, I guess you know in quite a personal manner and it ref- that reflected when we did the episode and it's kind of the point where i realized actually we've met someone new here and there's other people we can meet and there's things we can do and it was just like it, i had a very giddy moment when i was when it came to that point so it's just like okay this is quite interesting i i i i i i, I can't quite believe this we have actually got a season three guest that was a recommendation of Ty and Dagger, but we can't spoil who it is, but we can tell you that it's someone that they highly recommend. I think Steph yeah. realised it took off when we sent her a list of people to draw. Yes, that was it. It was just basically like, okay, a few pictures, no biggie, I can easy help out. And I was like, and I need this person, and this person, and this person, and this person. I was like, oh gosh, it's a tidal wave of pictures. Ah! But we did it. We got there, and then we got help. We had Puffy on, and we had Cat Cool Draw, and... Sunny Citrus Pony Butt. I and like Sunny. It's like more and more people. It was good. How does it feel knowing that you've been doing this for a year now anyway? It's like, it feels odd that it's been a year that's passed already. It's like, jeez, already. Well, oh that was my the thing goodness, that... what was I thinking? Yeah. Well, that was the thing. Like, We only realised it was a year's anniversary about two or three days ago when I happened to mention we were talking about Creative Vibes to someone else and I went, uh, I think I, I was mentioning James Cork or something, went to check the video and went, Oh, crikey, that's like in four days' time. That was a year ago. What? Yeah. It's crazy to think that a year... I've known you guys for about a year now. Because it wasn't long before... Well, after that I started speaking to you guys proper. that you were like, hey, we're doing a podcast. Do you want to come on? Yeah, we really... I only really met you after my first op when Amy made you drive her out here so that you guys could give me cake. I remember that. That was when we were in the car. 
That that really yeah. made, that really made me feel better. <laughs> Cake fixes all problems. <laughs> it does. It really does. Yep. That's why I'm the ruler at my work. <laughs> so, what would you say was the toughest interview, or in Steph's case, art piece that you had to do? Toughest uh, interview. Uh, well, I think in terms of technical, I think you and I might agree, Sugar, that Doctor Ziggy's episode was a bit of a kerfuffle. A technical minefield. <laughs> yeah, technical minefield. Lovely guest. Love Doctor Ziggy, but the um, the internet did not love us that day. Or love all, them. All I think the internet rooter derps. <laughs> Yeah, how many times did that call die out during the interview? What, like three times, four times? Something like that, yeah. It was enough times that I could we, put that number on I it. I can not... tell you that we had two separate files for the recording because it kept cutting. Oh, help. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I felt so sorry for you after we'd done that one because I was sitting like, help. Like, Sugar Dove does not need this to try and... Well, like, that if I'm was being like... honest, I think the toughest interview from an editing point of view is actually Dr. Wolf. It took me three days to edit the audio for Dr. Wolf. Oh my, that's... I, I can cut down an audio in half an hour if it's a good interview. I can cut it down in three if it's a, if it's a toughie, because, you know, you take your time to up the sound and down the sound and cut the swear words and all the other bits and bobs. And then Dr. Wilson was, I had to change his audio down, I had to change Kyle's audio up, we had to re-record some of the lines, we had to just cut out... Some of, of the um, lines. All the um, <laughs> yes, some ads. of the lines. Mm. Yeah, we had to record pretty much all of Kyle's questions. Not because not because it was bad questions, but because we recorded it at 2am and Kyle and me sounded like zombies. <laughs> yeah, I was somewhere in between dead and zombies. So it was, yeah, I wasn't on the best of states. So if you actually listen to Dr. Wolf's episode, you'll notice that I'm sounding surprisingly peppy and well articulated. And that's because of the fact that I wrote down every single line, every single bit that I did, including all the little uh, ad libs I did and the little laughs and the little kind of reactions, emotional actions. I was acting in that episode. I, that was bona fide acting. And uh, frankly, I won a medal. You did, Peter you did very, very as well. good as you're getting. <laughs> I'll take it. It's like I'm trying to think of what was the person. What was the person? I think it was Harriet that you did an interview with. That picture oh, gave me a lot of problems. Apple Jacks. All those Apple Jacks kept crashing, Art Weaver. I remember now. Oh, gosh. That was Kyle's favourite picture, though, to be fair. <laughs> well, I'm the glad Apple... that you, my pain was worth it, Kyle. <laughs> oh, listen, like, you know, if you want to get into my heart, Apple Jacks are a very good way of going. It's just, yeah, I saw that and I was just like, oh, that is so sweet. The hills of Applejack. They just keep on rolling. They see me rolling. They hating. <laughs> just, sorry, I can't resist. I need time to get here so we can do the rap song. Maybe this could be a future episode on Midnight Scribes. Do some raps. Get him to rap. I'll tell you what then. In ter- a, we briefly talked about earlier on a uh, about sugar what your guest favorite guest might be because we you're discussing it there so what for you guys has been your favorite guest either to draw for to edit or just in terms of you know guests you've met skyward (laughs) Skyward was lovely i i think if anyone could hear me behind the scenes i I hadn't had the chance to speak to her before the call. Like we we chatted on Deviant Art, but we never spoke. But as soon as I heard her voice and I got to hear her personality, I fell in love with her. She is just the sweetest, cutest, most adorable person in the whole wide universe. And I had the the great fortune of being able to work with her just now behind the scenes. So I I just really loved her, and I really love that I get to be friends with her now. And it's just it makes me really happy. <laughs> Aww. Because making friends is all part of the process. Yeah, it's fantastic. Like um, we're talking with a season three guest just now who wants to help behind the scenes as well. So it's kind of exciting that Aww. all these people we're meeting are going, "Hey, can we work with you now?" And it's like, "Yes, yes, you Aww, can." So lovely. <laughs> all right, I'm going to be really boring and just say my favorite was Ty and Daga because obviously I was a big fan of the guy before you guys even started interviewing him. So it's just like, "Yay, hear more of him!" Way. <laughs> 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 I know, I, I do love the picture you've done of Ty and Daga, which um, I'm not sure if other people have seen it, but it's um, it's oh, just it? a very yeah. creepy drawing of him staring at you at the with the word no. I like, oh, right. I like no, two buck, the two it. buck drawing. Yeah, two buck. So it's just, just like, like, he went on about an album, it's like, I need, I need an album. He's not going to ever make an album, but I need an album. 
Oh, but you did, made you that. Know, did you know this is the behind the scenes secret for everyone that's listening? And there, there was a we sometimes do talk with the former guests behind the scenes. So Ty and Daga, Kyle, and myself are on a call, and they've decided they're going to start a metal band. <gasps> <gasps> Kyle. <laughs> So we're going to have to draw Midnight Scribe and Ty and Daga in the most ridiculously rock outfits we can come up with. And it has to be ridiculous. Yeah. What kind of I, rock and rap? It I, needs to look kind of Limp Bizkit. Kind of just like... Linkin Park. No, no, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah, but you're going to be like hair metal. We are talking like Steel Panther, Bon Jovi, that throw. It has to happen. I've got to be honest. I think we're me and Ty and Daga are too cheesy to be Bon Jovi. We'd have to be Europe. Not even Aerosmith. Not even Aerosmith. Dang. Oh, not Aerosmith. No, we're too cool for. We're not cool. Not cool enough. Too uh, cool. Oh, oh, too oh! Cool you're trying to so cool for Aerosmith. No, no. Aerosmith too cool for you. Oh, well, of course they are. If you believe her. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sorry, this is early morning sass right now. I don't know why I'm saying that about Aerosmith. I love Aerosmith. Which mean early morning sass? This is just like everyday sass with you. No. <laughs> Doesn't need no. a time period. You're just sassy anyway. You wake up and it's sass. So who's that, that good? Kyle's favorite then. My favorite guest. Oh. I can't choose this for my babies. I I'll, I'll have all the guests. I mean, it's I really enjoyed actually meeting so many new people as a result of the show, you know. And it's definitely, um, you know, my social life has certainly changed a lot as a result of this show, you know, because I've made so many friends around the world through the show who, you know, I'm delighted to call friends and best friends and people who I talk with on a daily basis, you know. And it's I've met so many fantastic people, you know, both from uh, recording the show and even uh, actually at one or two of the cons that I've been to, you know, just being able to meet actually fans of the show, people who enjoy it. It's just like, this is strange, but I enjoy this. It's so lovely. It's just, I love everyone that we've had on the show. You know, it's, um, I mean, there's certain guests that I've um, met with better in terms of, uh, like, on interview and whatnot. I mean, obviously I mentioned Ty and Dag and I'll keep mentioning him because, you know, he's probably the archetype. But, you know, there's every guest I really enjoyed having on like uh, you know having Relicious on was great Fitzy. meeting Dr. Wolf Fitzy. was uh, Fitzy Fitzy as well Fitzy was absolutely great I've actually been getting to speak to him quite a lot recently and uh, obviously his plan is move to Scotland because one of my major plans by the way spoiler alert I'm trying to get as many bronies as possible into Scotland so if you want to help form the Brony Society of Scotland um, move to Scotland get in contact let us know <laughs> we'll get he's a big giant house he's creating an army watch out <laughs> he's creating an arc bronies and bronies He's building the Ark for the Bronies. <laughs> exactly. We put the Bronies on two by two, and uh, we'll get the Alcorns to fly it out of there. So yeah, that's that's the plan. But uh, yeah, Fitzy was absolutely great. I mean, there was, I mean, I really enjoyed. I mean, all the guests were great in our way. What I really enjoyed about it was getting to learn about what you know, at the risk of sounding incredibly, incredibly cheesy, but you know, what makes them tick? How did it, you know? Why are they creative? What is it they enjoy about it? You know to me as a creator you know outside of mlp and outside of the show if i were to say what i create it would be as a writer you know i do scripts i do books i do all that sort of thing and though not much of it tends to actually appear outside because i you know i keep trying to send off to agents and all that sort of fun thing uh you know that's what i do so to see every creators and see well why do you do it and what do you get out of it and how do you enjoy it and kind of i find it quite inspiring i really enjoy that aspect of it it's so sweet <laughs> <laughs> What would you guys say was the best part of the process for you? And have you got a worst part of the process that you find while doing this? Where do I begin? <laughs> Indeed, that's why I asked. Oh and my go. word. <laughs> yeah, I think this is yeah, you this go is, first, this is a think. sugar dove question right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where do I start? Between inviting and finding guests, answering the emails, scheduling them all, making sure the schedules match with Kyle's, making sure that he's happy with his research, informing them of all the like things we have to do, like no swearing, co-hosting, no co-hosting. Then there's things like editing audio, feeding it back to them, organizing the art team, making sure everyone's happy. I don't know where to begin. And then getting home at stupid o'clock at night and going, I have to upload a podcast before I forget. You know, I've said this repeatedly, you know, outside the podcast, I'll keep reminding that, you know, Sugar Dove is the master of the show, you know, and she does everything behind the scenes, you know, I'm very much the face and voice of the show, but it is, it is Sugar Dove's show. Yeah, she is the machine behind the scene. And the machine behind Helen Bruni's as well, actually, to be fair. She's just a machine. <laughs> I'm a boss level, that's what I am. <laughs> Yes, you have to know your tactics if you're going to take sugar on. Ah! 
Oh gosh, I don't know what I could say the worst part is, to be honest, because it's it's all a challenge, and some days are better than others, where it's like, oh, I got this organised, yay, and other days it's, oh no, I have to get this organised. I, I can have to say that the best bit might be getting to tell Kyle to move on <laughs> during <Fine>. an interview. <laughs> it's like, I love Kyle, sometimes he asks the best questions, and sometimes he just asks something so barmy and sticks with it for like 10 minutes, and I'm like, Kyle, Kyle, move on, <laughs> Kyle, move on. <laughs> Just get him a stick and just beat him and be like, now, move on! There is a wonderful piece of artwork out there by James Cork, which Kyle commissioned last year, of him recording in the studio and they shook it up in the background with a card that says, move on! Yeah, <laughs> yeah we could that... relate to it. I remember our interview. That, and yeah, that all I saw on the text was like, move on, Kyle! Move on, Kyle! Move on, Kyle! Oh, I know. Just, yeah. I've actually got that as my desktop background. And so every time, whenever I boot up this laptop at any point, regardless of whether it's you know, creative vibes are just personal. I get to see Sugar Dove looking angrily at me with green eyes, with a downturned mm-hmm. lip, with a sign saying move on, which I've currently tried to block with as many icons as I can. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you're a lot better than when we first started. Well, yeah, I think it's, you know, just testament to experience, I suppose. You know, when we started, we didn't have a clue what we were think doing. We, were, we didn't have a clue <laughs> what we were doing. We didn't think we were going to be doing it for that long. It did spiral very much out of control in terms of what we were expecting. I mean, like, from doing a first couple of episodes to get into the end of a season to then end up at Brony Scott. Yeah, that, that was, was a bit of a jump. To be fair, you got your first fan art at a convention in the Netherlands? Yep, a yes, heartwarming con. con. Yeah, I went there and uh, I met, I guess, a lovely guy called Red Wing who uh, actually commissioned a bit of art, which I think you spoke about with the, in the uh, alleged Mad Munchkinites uh, group, which you might have heard about if you're a part of the Mad Munchkin streams. And he drew a piece of artwork with me of um, uh, somewhere in Scotland there is a pair of floating lips next to a microphone that man is Kyle McCall <laughs> and it is just brilliant yeah that was oh. an intro from one of your episodes if I remember correctly and they've just taken that and drawn it Kyle yeah, uses think... this reference in every other episode <laughs> yeah, there are recurring stories <laughs> it's now the favourite recurring story is it? it's the legend of the floating lips in the highlands <laughs> I know well, actually speaking of that actually um, the moderator of the CS of Central Scotland Bronies Night Flame he was saying the other day oh you know Kyle how can you play video games with me if you're just a pair of floating lips and I admit I, what I wanted to say to him and I never actually said it because I want to save this bit of sass for when I really need it but what I was going to say is yes I am a pair of floating lips next time microphone however I do also come with a foot so I can kick your butt ah See, now I'm just imagining this mishmash creature like the, the you know, the legendary Haggis Smith that they took oh, yeah. tourists with. That's what, Kyle that's is the what, Haggis! Kyle is the Haggis. <laughs> it all makes sense now. This is why he doesn't like eating Haggis. I'm sorry, I did not realise those being so racist. I'm sorry, Kyle, I've been eating your kin. <laughs> oh, that's okay, don't worry. I mean, you know, what can I say? I eat whiskers. It's like Cats do don't like whiskers. that. They're awesome. Exactly. Is that you and I have something very much in common? And dreamies. Mm. Dreamies? <laughs> yes, dreamies. They're like the best cat treat ever. How could you not know what this is? I'm sorry, I'm much more of a um, steak pine chips guy. Oh. The, the dreamies advert is the one where the, the guy shakes the packet and the cat leaps through the wall to get to the it treat. It is legit, yo. It is legit. I have <laughs> seen cats going crazy. There's crack in that stuff. <laughs> cat lip. Oh, so it's, it's like their equivalent of Pringles. It's cat crack. Okay, I have a very, very important question. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, okay, we're ready for this? Okay. That's it, let's go. Am I, or am I not, the best princess? You are the best double princess I have ever met. No, you're not, because as we have already discussed privately, <gasps> I am the superpower princess <gasps> pony Super of the High Bronies. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah, still like you better, to draw it. because you've got two crowns. Yeah, I have to draw it among my other requests and challenges. Whoops. <laughs> That, that's a story for Highland Bronies right there. For for those who may know us and may not know us, myself and Kyle live slash work in the Inverness area. So Kyle and me will often meet for cups of tea on lunch breaks just to chat about the show and what we're doing. So one lunchtime on the way back to my work, we go through a market which has some old-fashioned jewellers and we spot this great big ring with multi-tiered like swirls and there are jewels everywhere and it's like 4k a cow goes at that price it better bring me superpowers <laughs> to, w- to which i respond 
I just pictured him in this full drag queen princess outfit with rainbow shooting everywhere, and I giggled out loud and went, rainbow power princess. <laughs> and that is now going to happen. That is now my next forum. Anybody out will... there listening has to draw you as a rainbow power princess. <laughs> it's like, it's a new fan art competition. Everyone, draw Kylie as a rainbow powered princess. Exactly. I, I am a double princess. I have tiaras, and I am adorable. But Kyle is a rainbow pirate princess. <laughs> Kyle exactly. is technically a superhero. Yeah, and for anyone who is now listening going, hmm, the nice scribe, he's a, that is at least a masculine voice. Why is he a princess? Well, I just say, forget your gender norms. I'm quite happy being a princess. Screw you. Boom. Whereas I can just literally imagine you, Kyle, as Kyle in a dress, and it's really odd, and it's hilarious oh, to me. Listen, look, I would rock the miniskirt. Don't even dare no, diss not me. The miniskirt. I could rock it. I would be there like Emma Peel in the Avengers. It's like, okay, I'm ready right here to kick some interviewing bats. I'm picturing... oh, you need a train. You need a rainbow train. I'm picturing Kyle in the Mary Sue dress. Oh, gosh. Oh, don't no, hang on. You've just, I'm slightly worried that there's going to be fan art of Man Munchkin <laughs> with me dressed as Mary Sue going and like, Mary I'm Sue just working on a script. <laughs> <laughs> I secretly want to see this. <gasps> That's art I want to see, right? If anyone out there is listening to this, do fan art of that. I would love to see that, please. <laughs> Kyle just likes any fan art. I'm not going to lie. Well, that's true. Well, I, actually, I do love art in all forms. You know, it's generally something I really enjoy. So it's, you know, it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do love seeing art myself. I mean, who doesn't? You know, that's always a great thing. But, you know, I, I enjoy seeing the work that people do. It's, you know, it's, that's one of the things I've enjoyed about, you know, the pe- people I've met who have been on the show but also people who have met who are just part of the brony community because i see you know people you know the man magic connect chat for example who do streams who do artwork commissions you know little odds names short stories and it's just you know there's you know like i said before you know if i go in too sentimental there's something incredibly inspiring about that and something i really enjoy so I, you know i appreciate seeing any of it it's been one crazy year anyway <sighs> all that work as well definitely i mean it has certainly been a a long one, uh, but I mean, a fantastic um, experience, you know, doing the whole show. And it's just been a strange how I've actually been able to, you know, say to friends or to family, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm busy recording Creative Vibes now. Can I just have half an hour to myself where I record this episode? Just like, I should get one. Do you want whatever you want to get? You know, those old fashioned clocking in machines you used to get in factories, you know, where you clock in and clock out with the little pincher. I want one of them for my bedroom. So if I come in to do Creative Vibes, I want to go clock in. And then when I go back out, clock out no what you need is like the light outside your room's going on air off air yes oh we need to get one of those for kyle (laughs) you need that you need that desperately i think i'm starting to need that now with being on mbs i I want to get that the old-fashioned radio mic for kyle like you know the ones with like the the big oh that would be good that you put in front of it so you don't get the popping noise i want to get one of those for kyle yeah. To be fair, I do actually have a more um, professional microphone and a stand and a pop shield like that, but not kind of like the old fashioned one. It's like, you know, kind of like a modern setup. But I do, I would love something a bit more retro because, as we all know, I love the retros. Yes. yes, that would just be the perfect gift for you, Mr. Retro. Got a question for you guys, actually, because um, we've done 30 odd episodes now. You know, we're recording our third season just now. Do, do you have a favorite moment or thing from any of the episodes? Like- See, Steph didn't hear a lot of the recordings, so she wouldn't have heard a lot of the sneaky secrets I've heard. My oh, favourite yeah. thing is when Kyle thinks that he can sass me on air, and the guest, <laughs> for example, Sketchy Sounds, thinks he can sass me on air, and I can just <laughs> edit it all out. <laughs> <laughs> so I miss the sass, but I love the sass, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people don't get to hear the things that people say about me on air, because I you have to... Sense you censor you! I censor me. I, I think I, I kind of regret it sometimes because oh. I think, oh, it'd oh. be really nice for people to know what I'm like. And then I'm like, no, because it's not my show. <laughs> Kyle Sass got in on my episode that you are Kingpin. I remember that. A, that few, a few things have slipped through. <laughs> a few things. This is my gamer credit, and I was like, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, we are building up a mythology around the Sugar Dove, which I reckon is going to eventually transform to its own series. Just like there'll be like some sort of like. And here's Sugar Dove, Master Editor. I can't help but notice that you used the Thunderbirds theme. Of course. Well, Thunderbirds, I think, would be appropriate. I love the Thunderbirds. Thunderbird 2 for the win. Well, to be fair, Thunderbirds works, because as we all know, Lurker and I are puppets to the Supreme Leader Sugar Dove. 
I yes, was she saying is our that overlord. Call last night. No joke, that's what I was saying last night when I was in a multi call. I was saying I will draw a picture of you guys as puppets and there's me above you. But I'm You're not like, that dance, dance to my strings. I'm, I'm not that advanced at drawing yet, but that was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> See you with a an evil looking face in the shadows and us just going around like, ah, I got some strings. Told me, yep. Believe it or not, a lot of the guests in season one were suggestions of uh, one guest in particular who went and told all of his friends that I was really sweet and they should talk to me. <laughs> and then everybody oh. added me and I'm like, advantage Highland Bronies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what you get for being a double princess. Yay, double princess. The power of the double princess. I, I think I have a bonus question. A oh, oh. bonus question. And that will okay. be the last thing I say. Is there any behind the scenes secrets you would like to share with the populace? And I don't just mean in the show, I mean Highland Bronies behind the scenes, things that we get up to. Oof. Hmm. Ooh. Hmm. That is opening the floodgates, I think. I'm not quite sure. Uh... <laughs> Steph thinking, what can I say that makes? I need a GoPro camera and people to like have a contract that they're not going to sue me after I've pounced on them. It's like lurking with lurker cats, sneak up on people in real time. <laughs> I mean, oh, in terms of uh, you know things behind the scenes that have brewing, I mean, obviously we have things like um, the semi-regular meetups we have, which are which are always great fun. I, the thing I remember was um. I remember the time uh, when we first met Amy, aka Man Munchkin, you know, and she came along to one of our meets. And I'm pretty sure none of us knew of Man Munchkin or who she was. She was just someone local who was a brony. And uh, she was with us this whole meet, and we were there for a couple of hours. Great fun, you know, we went to local cafes, shops, you know, usual fun games. And I think, didn't she reveal to you, Sugar, afterwards, that, like, who she was and kind of, like, how great it was to just have a, a, a normal meetup. meeting, yeah. And, th- and then I looked her up and I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I now have to pretend I'm a normal person friend, but I can't because yes. she's so incredible. But no, it, it, it did become a case. It was a moment of shock, but she is really just a close friend now. It was it was a case of, actually, you know what, she's right. Don't make a scene. She really appreciated yeah. us being normal people, so let's be normal people. Steph, oh, definitely come on, not. you're bound to have some gossip, Steph. Come on, behind the scenes. It's like behind the scenes, behind the scenes. I just like the tomfoolery that me and Amy get up to. Just Thank flip you. and document us and just see us being really weird. You, Occasionally played games with, see... you played games with Kyle and stuff, though, haven't you? You've been right. Yeah, but I've not done it for a while. All they do is want me to play Left 4 Dead and they just watch me die in horrendous, horrendous deaths. How about this Monopoly story? Oh, oh. god, no! No, I forgot about the Monopoly story! I'd blocked it from my memory! Why would you remind me of such torment? <laughs> it's the only game of Monopoly that's ever had an epic soundtrack in ever. Who listens to Jewel of the Fates and Flight of the Valkyries when you're rolling the dice? Uh, dice. It's been the tensest thing ever. What he does is he just he comes in all nice and charming. And he's like, oh, I'll trade you this thing so you can complete your set and you just give me this itty bitty little coloured one. It's not going to do anything. It's a you're getting the better offer kind of thing. As soon as you do that, like you've just unleashed all of the demons and opened a portal into this world. You never give him the colours. Never give him the colours! He'll bleed you dry and leave you in the dust. Yeah, I'm not going to lie that I did turn into evil capitalist at one point. At one you point, did. I was I was so evil that I put on my little Halloween mask and just started laughing at them as I was rolling. Just While knowing Flight that of the Valkyries no... was playing as well, it was quite surreal. Yeah, it was a, an amazing game. But to be fair, I then got my backside handed to me when we were playing Buzz. <laughs> which I swear was rigged. God smiled upon me. And they yeah. let me win. What was it? Two times? Three times in a row? Three times. Oh, Not I that I was accounting. I saw that. I saw that hatred in your eyes. I know, because it was you, me, and Irvin. Uh, Infinite affection. So it was just yeah, just a doozy of a game. Although it's I do want a rematch. So much hatred. So much hatred in those eyes. It was glorious. It fed me. I uh, think my <laughs> favourite behind the scenes secret is that our season one guest, Sketchy Sounds, is actually a gaming buddy of mine. And I, I hate to admit that he's right on when he recorded on air a little. Here's a little dirty secret. I am a decent gamer. I am not, but I am not the best gamer. Now, I play Monster Hunter. Sketchy plays Monster Hunter, but Sketchy plays it to the point of perfection. I play oh it when I have an hour after work. 
And Craig plays it on the bus, so the little cheater is ahead of me for months. <laughs> <laughs> but Sketchy on air was like, oh, Deanne, Deanne's not as good as I am kind of thing, and he's, she's not as good as she makes out to be, and I'm like, excuse me? Mr. Plays at all hours of the night. I am just as good as you. I'd only had one bad night. <laughs> I'd had one yes. bad night. I was really tired and was not paying attention and died a couple of times. It's not that bad. Sketchy has bad nights. Craig has bad nights. But he was making fun of my Monster Hunter schools and I was not having it. But now I can have quite happily say that if I want to play Monster Hunter or I want to banter that I can go to Sketchy Sounds. Like Sketchy Sounds has been known to jump into my live streams and be like, I want to play music for you. And I'm like, you're right. And then so that's the way of the Sketchy Sounds. The way of the Sketchy Sounds. Comes sound. in, plays music. I know. Actually, I've got my own little um, behind-the-scenes thing with uh, Sketchy from uh, my time at Harpo Rink on, which um, these two I think I've heard of, but uh, I haven't been able to fully explain to everyone but uh we were um a couple of rooms apart at half warming con where we spent the whole convention you know hanging out together at various points you know having dinner and whatnot and um on one of the nights we were in i think it was james and sketchy's room uh, james cork uh and um i think at some point we were playing music together there was some, i can't remember the full setup sketchy will explain it if you ask him and uh, he'll Probably be, I think, don't think we've spoken since, which probably explains part of how angry I made him. Uh, because what I did was I started playing the music on my PSP, the soundtrack to Sonic Underground, which oh, is a which is a bit like putting a red rag to bull. So he obviously chased me down. I ran to the bathroom, shut the door. He went to open the door. I had the handle. Handle did not exactly enjoy that experience. That is all I'll say. You deserve every <laughs> second of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what now that I've uh, effectively found a way of ruining my friendship with Sketchy I'm so sorry Sketchy please forgive me I will play music only now from the Sonic the Hedgehog video games apart from uh, Sonic um, R because we don't talk about that one uh, I think it's about time actually I think we've probably ran out of time for this episode we've actually been yakking for quite a wee while but we will wrap up there thank you listeners for Listen, you have now met, uh, well, you've already met Lurker Cat, but you've actually now met in the, maybe not the flesh, but certainly in the voice, Sugar Dove. And uh, uh, did you guys enjoy the experience? I enjoyed the experience, but who cares? Well, Sleepy. what we'll do is we'll wrap, we'll wrap up there just now. So thank you guys for listening. If you want to get in contact with us, well, we have the Facebook page at Helm Bronies. We have the YouTube channel where you're watching this episode right now. And we have the email address there. So feel free to get in contact with us you know if you want to if you've got any special questions behind the scenes we can answer that perhaps might do an faq video or something on the facebook page at some point in the future get in contact with us if you've got any constructive criticism send that to us or if you're a creator in the mlp community and perhaps you might want to be featured on creative vibes after hearing about how wild and wacky it is on the show just uh fire us a message and you know send us links to your stuff we'll see what happens and uh, of course we also have a tumblr and a twitter uh, i'm pronouncing no name that i cannot say you, so have, sugar you, you have the gallic admin here yes uh ronya glass r-o-i-n-n-a-g-g-l-a-s is a, our mascot and if you tweet at him or if you look him up on tumblr you will find him there and all that all these links will be put down in the description below so you'll be able to come straight to us and uh, get in contact because we're always looking for new people to speak to things to happen always get in contact we're happy to receive any messages we get but we'll wrap up the show just now thank you so much guys for watching we will catch you all in the next season goodbye bye, bye.